Hi. Hello. This is a Korean. Born Korean. Yes. Yes. Timothy. That's me. Let me ask you a question. Shoot. Kim Jong Un. It's a bad boy. Period. Period. Is the regime in North Korea going to change? Only the law can do that. Okay. What about the relationship between Korea, North Korea, sorry, North Korea and Russia? What do you think about that? Yes. But seriously, uh, on the political side of it, is it ugly? Just about worse it can get for us, for South Koreans, yes. Okay, so that brings the image in I want to share with people. Mm. Uh, we know 100,000 troops, North Koreans over there. And that's the numbers you've heard as well, helping Russia. We know supplies. But you made a brilliant statement to me a minute ago. When the world is looking at Ukraine and Russia, it's a great place for North Korea to be used as an attack place while the world's looking everywhere else. So do South Koreans think there's a possibility for war? Well, I don't know about South Koreans, but I'm, I'm, I just pray and hope that uh, Kim Jong-un is smart enough to not uh, jeopardize Korean Peninsula for the sake of uh, his treaty with Putin whatever decision he makes. So you guys are aware of that treaty? Yes. See, I've been covering that treaty on my program, talking about it from the Russian side, how important it is. And this is why Ukraine came into the Kursk region, uh, as, I'm sorry, as Ukraine came into the Kursk region, then Russia activated that treaty. Putin signed it into law, this military agreement between North Korea and Ukraine. We look at it from the Ukrainian side, but the reality is we need to look at it from the, the peninsula side in Korea. Yes. It could activate a serious problem. Oh, definitely. Uh, there's a potential for World War III starting from Korean Peninsula. So we're just praying Yes, that it would not happen, that uh, nobody would uh, jeopardize such a, such a horrible outcome, especially Kim Jong-un. Um, pray and hope that uh, he would have sense enough to avoid war in Korean Peninsula, the only thing that we are concerned is that throughout the history, any nation, any man who prepare war and threaten the war mm -hmm. always carried out. Yes. Th that's our concern. It is our concern. Let me ask you a couple more questions and we'll go eat. Uh, any, any chance Kim Jong-un goes out of power? Not humanly speaking. Okay. Uh, if he went out of power, his sister would be next? Anything can happen, you know, only divine intervention can prevent that regime to go on and cause the havoc that they might be um, able to cause for the whole world. With truth being shared right now, are North Koreans, I mean, this is br your brothers. Yes. Yeah, is that how you view it as a yes, South Korean? Yes. Okay. We're one people. One people. Are they oppressed? Without doubt. Okay. Without doubt. So the camps, the, the, the imprisonments, the torture, all of that, it's, it's real. Nobody can deny that. Okay. Well, this is my friend Timothy here in Los Angeles today, and you're getting a little bit of Korean expertise, South Korean expertise. Well, you're an expert. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, you're definitely uh, an expert. Well, God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Timothy. There you go, guys. A little bit of inside look. Listening to a North, uh, to listen to a North Korean. <laughs> well, listening to a South Korean. Well, my mother is from North Korea originally. Wait a second. Pyongyang. Yes. Your mother is originally from Pyongyang. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. My grandfather was, uh, of course, uh, lived in Pyongyang. Yes. So when you talk about North Korea, you have roots there. Yes. Definitely. Wow. Yes. Well, one day, to be honest with you, I would love to go to Pyongyang. I really do. I have a desire to go yes. there. My desire is that um, our nation, which is only one, mm -hmm. will be, will have a peaceful unification without war. I agree with that. Yes. I agree with that. I got to put my seatbelt on. So yes. thank you guys. Are you a good driver? Well, my wife thinks so.
<laughs> that's all that's important. <laughs> anyway, guys, you're getting a little bit of perspective today, and I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little bit of perspective right here in downtown Los Angeles, California. Alvarado. All right, back at you now. We're driving through LA streets here and the conversation just went on. I had the camera off. I flipped it back on. You were giving insight into how the world has wanted to divide Korea, North Korea. It started, of course, from the Soviets. And then you talked about even like Israel has been reunited and came back. Germany, East and West Germany has been reunited, but North Korea and South Korea are not reunited because the world doesn't want it. And for the entire recent history, you've been sur surrounded by the most powerful nations in the world, not in, withstanding the United States, China, Russia, and Japan. Yes. So it's been a tough haul. It is. It's just tragic that uh, we're smack uh, squeezed in between these powerful nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, no Russian leader or Chinese leader, even Japanese, want us to reunify. Because once we do that, we have one of the strongest economy, technology. And that's from the South Korean side? Yes. Okay. And then, of course, uh, Rocket Boys up there in the north. Yes. I don't think anybody wants Korea to... become one so that is just sad very very sad to say the least yes. and you know when you think about it that way the United States connection you know even militarily and so deeply with South Korea and technology and relationships and economies and then you take a peek at that on the opposite side where of course it's obvious now the Russian connection with North Korea at unprecedented levels um, I have never even thought about that. The world doesn't want North Korea and South Korea reunited. It would become a powerful force. Well, definitely. Uh, a nation to reckon with. And uh, because, you know, our borders are shared with uh, China, Russia, and just to see between us and Japan, I really don't believe any other nation wants us to become one. Because that's going to be a very strong nation. Mm. And guys, you're getting some good perspective here. Just, I guess we can call this facts only or uh, some definitely experience. I mean, good grief. I honestly have never thought about that the world doesn't want uh, Korea reunited. And it makes absolute sense. Um, so when you see the DMZ zone there between North and South Korea and the split and the support that comes from the break in the nations now, as we talk about with the support of Ukraine, with Russia and China and Iran in North Korea. And I throw it in there, guys, India buying so much fuel from Russia, they're, they're assisting and funding that war machine. And then you take it on the other side, in South Korea, and that presence there, surrounded by China, Russia, and across the sea from Japan, and of course, the American partnership and presence. You know, we actually have a military pact um, with South Korea, yes. uh, signed in 1953, uh, the United States does. Correct, yes. And now Russia has their pact with North Korea. It's so so much focus on Middle East, but uh, Korean Peninsula is potentially a hotspot that can start World War Three at any time. Especially if one of these nations use Kim Jong Un to attack United States or Western world. We were talking about that, and it's very interesting. He said, uh, Timothy said, you know, basically. North Korea, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it could be used or manipulated or uh, it, it, it could be the place where, for example, another nation was attacked. And if that happened, you know, North Korea attacks, wherever it would be. Uh, of course, Russia would be there partnering and, and behind the scenes. But then Vladimir Putin could say, hold on, 
I didn't attack anybody. That's Kim Jong Un attacking, and, and the, the division continues. So, guys, a lot of uh, interesting perspective here, and I hope you enjoyed it, um, and just gave you some different insight. So, thank you, Timothy. Thank you. All right. So I had to come back for one little addendum clip here. Uh, as we're riding to our next place, we're still moving here in LA traffic. Uh, it's, it's, there's the subway over there. Um, this gentleman, Timothy, we, we're talking about his mother from Pyongyang, living in Pyongyang, and you know what life would have been like. So I started thinking, okay, so she was there. Uh, you got Kim Jong-un, and then his father was Kim Jong-il, and then you had the original, the grandpa, and his name was Kim il Kim il And then he goes on to tell me, yeah, well, my mom there went and took a picture with him. So, is that true? Yes, uh, my uh, grandfather was a freedom fighter under Japanese regime. Holy moly. Yes, and um, supposedly story is told that Kim Jong-il was also freedom fighter. And uh, somehow, her maiden name is Kim, so they're somehow connected. So, after she lived in the States for many years, she had an opportunity to visit North Korea with a bunch of people. And uh, they made an announcement at the hotel. Today, we're going to have a photo op, so everyone get dressed well. And then suddenly, that night, uh, Kim Jong-il showed up, <laughs> greeting people. Kim Il-sung, that is. Yeah, Kim Il-sung. Yes. So, uh, he took a group picture with a bunch of people from America, Korean Americans. Yes. And this is why you hang out here to get some facts and to get some understanding. We try to go right to the sources. So, uh, Timothy's mother's taking pictures with the first dictator. Hello. Probably these guys have some insight. 